Hey, Franz fans, it's Jordan Jackson back with overage defenseman Jacob Holmes as he enters his final regular season uh, in the OHL before uh, a playoff run. First of all, Homer, thanks for taking some time to spend with me today. Yeah. I want to talk about, first of all, your OHL draft. Uh, you were a first-round pick, a coveted pick for all OHL teams. It's the one pick they cannot trade. So obviously there's a lot of importance on that pick. The Sioux Greyhounds used it on you. Uh, what was draft day like for you, and what are your memories of that day? Yeah, it was pretty crazy. Um, it was a day that I spent at home with my family, which meant a lot. And, uh, you know, the emotions were a bit all over the place when we uh, heard my name go to the Sioux. I mean, my mom was a little worried about how far it was. <laughs> my dad was excited, and I was I was thrilled. I, You know, it was something I was thinking about that whole minor midget year. And, uh, you know, to hear my name dra drafted that early to, you know, a great organization up there in the Sioux, it, was, it meant a lot. Uh, as a first-round pick, expectations are kind of high right out of the gate. You stepped into the lineup uh, in your first year of eligibility. You played 57 games. What was that transition like for you to jump right from uh, minor minor uh, hockey into the OHL? Yeah, it was it was definitely you know something that I wasn't used to. Uh, you know, you're playing against older, faster, more skilled players. Um, you know, when I came into the league, there was there was lots of guys that were drafted to the NHL, and you know, even had some games in the NHL as well. So, um, you know. The, uh, the staff and the players helped me a lot in the Sioux with my transition and helped me out as much as they could and um, something I'm really thankful for and, uh, you know, worked out in the end. Everyone remembers their first goal. Your first point came pretty early, but it was an assist. Your first goal, you had to wait a little bit for it, uh, but you remember it well? Uh, I remember a bit of it. It was yeah. uh, at home in the Sioux uh, against Hamilton um and ty Karche. you know what's he doing now wow <laughs> doing all right that's for sure uh carts uh passed me on low to high and i i stepped into it and you know, i was lucky enough to find the back of the net and something i'll probably never forget one of the reasons you played 57 games instead of the 68 was uh a little national representation yeah. in your first year uh you played at the world u17s what was that experience like? You got to wear the Canadian Maple Leaf on your chest and represent our country at a national level. Yeah, it was an honor. I mean, you're playing against uh, you know every national team that you saw in World Juniors growing up as a kid, and uh, it's something that you know I took a lot of pride in, and I'm really thankful for the opportunity because I got to meet a lot of guys that I still talk to today, and that's league wide, right? CHL wide, mm -hmm. and um, you know I've met a lot of great friendships and guys that I actually got to play with after uh, after the fact in different tournaments as well. A lot of positives in that first year for you. Uh, unfortunately, the, the world went through COVID uh, into your second year, and we lost that entire OHL yeah. season. Uh, aside from the obvious, what were the challenges for you to stay hockey ready? Because the whole time we heard that we're hoping to come back, we're hoping to come back, and you never knew when that was going to happen. Yeah, and that's just it, um, the unknown of all, all of it. You know, we thought we were going to be back in two weeks. That didn't happen. We thought we were going to be back in two months, and then they called the season. And, uh, you know, I felt really bad for the older guys, you know, looking back, I, the older guys yeah. always, but, yeah. um, you know, you understand it now, right? I, yeah, yeah I, I get it. It would have yeah. sucked for sure. And, um, we were left out of a playoff spot and, um, you know, being at home for that long and, you know, not doing what you've done your whole life was definitely hard. And, you know, we all went through it. So, um, I'm just glad that, uh, we're back and doing what we love. It wrapped up with a positive though, for you, because although you didn't play, you still hear your, heard your name called on draft day. The Dallas Stars took you in the NHL entry draft. Uh, what was that experience like? And obviously, you know, you didn't get the full uh, in-person uh, draft the way we see it on TV, but still to hear your name must have been exceptionally awesome. Yeah, for sure. It was uh, a dream come true and, you know, a moment that I, I for sure will never forget. Um, you know, I was at home. It was just me and my family. I just wanted to keep it, keep it close. Um, I actually wasn't even at home. I went on a drive just to clear my head yeah. and get away from it a bit. Sure. And um, I started getting text messages and calls on my phone. So I went home and then, you know, after that, I had all my f friends and family over after to celebrate and it was a great night. So, you no, know, I know it wasn't in person, but it was just as good. Yeah. The next year, uh, you had a new experience again. Uh, this was getting traded for the first time. Uh, the Sioux made a trade with the Sudbury Wolves. Uh, you going to Sudbury uh, in a big deal for them as uh, the Sioux tried to load up. You were one of the key pieces going back to Sudbury. What was that like? Uh, first of all, the trade experience, but knowing that Sudbury wanted you to be a part of their next couple of years. Yeah, it was, it was different for sure. I mean, I was so used to the Sioux and uh, really built a lot of great relationships there. Um, you know, but going going to Sudbury, I knew it was a fresh start for me, and you know I could 
try and prove myself to them. And, uh, you know, that first that first half year, uh, I felt like I, I really did. And I found myself more as a player. Um, they gave me all the opportunity and I kind of ran with it. And, you know, it uh, it really worked out. Going into your your second year in Sudbury, I guess, not your second year in league, your second year in Sudbury, you were named captain. That's an honor that one person gets per year, per yeah. team. Uh, you had named, been named captain uh, York Simcoe before uh, you got to the OHL, so you had some experience. But this is the OHL. This is a whole different level. What's that mean to you to have a team put the C on your jersey? Yeah, it was it was an honor. It was something that you know I took a lot of pride in. Um, like you said, I wore the C in minor midget, but it was a little different coming up into junior because you got a whole bunch of different age groups involved. Um, you know, we had a great group there in Sudbury with a lot of hard workers, so it made my job really easy. And uh, it's you know I still talk to a lot of the guys today that uh, I played with there, and um, you know there's a lot of great memories made while I was there. It was uh, time for trade number two. After that, uh, to the Windsor Spitfires. This time, you were the key piece going to the team that was pushing uh, for a title that season. Um, being on the other side of it, not the the rebuilding piece going back, what was it like knowing a team that was all in wanted you to be a part of it? It was exciting. I uh, you know I felt like I had a good start to my year, and uh, I didn't I didn't really think I was going to get traded to be honest with you. But um, you know I got the call in to see the GM there in Sudbury, and he told me you know what was going on and what their idea was, and you know I was excited to go and you know hopefully make a playoff push with the team there, and um, you know unfortunately we didn't get to that, but you know. Going there, playing with you know the kind of players I got to play with there and make some great friendships, uh, really meant a lot, and I was I was really fortunate. I, I'm sure you heard Schmitty earlier <laughs> giving you a bit of a hard time about the yeah. sweep in that series, yeah. but uh, every experience in hockey is an opportunity to yeah. learn. So obviously that wasn't what you guys wanted going into that playoff series, but what do you take away from it, especially now that you can bring to Kingston for this playoff run? Yeah, I mean you just the playoffs is a totally different animal. You know we finished first in the West. Uh, we had a really skilled team, fast team, and, you know, we did play hard. Mm-hmm. Um, Kitchener caught us off guard, and, you know, before you knew it, it was over, and that's something that, you know, I am going to bring to the room this year. And, you know, we also got Doobie, who won it last year, which is, you know, awesome. So you get a bit of both sides of it, and, uh, you know, hopefully we can really go on a run here. In June of uh, 2023, you're traded to the Frontenacs, your final destination uh, in, Suitcase. in the OHL. Um, what was that experience like? You knew coming in, you were mm-hmm. asked to be a leader for the team as one of the OAs. Uh, again, I was excited for another opportunity to play. Um, you know, being in Windsor the year before, we had a lot of guys returning, and uh, I got the call in June. Like I said, I was actually up north fishing. I missed it by about two days, but I got the call eventually. <laughs> and, uh, you know, I was, I was really excited. I, you know, I want to be a good guy like in the room and you know help out on the ice as much as I can and just you know really uh really enjoy my last year and uh you know hopefully things carry on next year for these guys as well what's your biggest takeaway Ben so far from Kingston the community and the Frontenacs because not only have you been a big addition on the ice but I know you're out in the community a lot and you're meeting people and signing autographs for kids and all those sorts of things so uh what is your biggest takeaway Ben from the the city of Kingston in general yeah just uh you know coming into this year I I know it's my last year and I just wanted to enjoy it all and take it all in and uh Kingston's been a great spot for me I've had an amazing billet family and I've met a lot of great people here and um, you know, I just want, uh, I want everyone to enjoy it as much as I have and as much as I do. You were an A here. Uh, you are about to play your last couple of regular season games, but definitely not the end of your career because the playoffs are in sight. Uh, as an assistant captain on this team with valuable playoff experience, uh, what do you say to the guys as we head into this uh, playoff run, which hopefully is going to last for a couple months here? Well, you don't get many shots at it. Um, you know, out of my four years before this, well, I guess three with COVID, but you know, I only I only got to playoffs once and you know, four games and I was out. So just uh, don't take it for granted and really push for it because uh, you never know what uh, what can happen later on. When the time comes that the OHL season is over, you already have plans for what's next, and that comes in June. You're going to go represent Canada again. This time in the World Ball Hockey Championships. How the heck does that happen? Uh, it's just a uh, sport I've been playing my whole life. Um, we grew up, we got a good league back home in Alston, and uh, it's been competitive with the guys because we all started playing when we were really young. Uh, you know, I went to uh, a national level tournament last year in New Brunswick and um, you know, had a good tournament, had some fun with some guys that I see in the summer. And, uh, you know, I was asked uh, this, past, this past winter if I want to go to Switzerland and 
you know, join the team there, and I'm I'm really excited for it. I've never been over to Europe at all, and it's going to be a good experience for me. Have you played with any of the guys on the team that's going to Switzerland before? Uh, I've played with a couple at the national tournament okay. I just went to, yeah. and then you know I played against all of them that were there uh, in July. Do you know Mitchell Byrne, former Kingston front there? I don't, but no? <laughs> uh, I do know that he played here, and uh, I'm sure we'll get chatting about that as well. Awesome. Uh, Homer, to get to this point, it takes a, a great support system, uh, family, friends, uh, teammates, coaches, everything. Who would you like to thank that's helped you get to this point in your career? Yeah, like you said, it takes the village. Yeah, it really sure. does. Um, I you know, want to start off with thanking the McKay family in Sault Ste. Marie. They were, you know, all... Every billet that I've had was was awesome and you know very welcoming from the start, especially getting traded in the middle of the years. And it's hard when they maybe had a player moving out uh, before I got there. And then I got traded to Sudbury, and I want to thank the uh, Penny family there. And I got traded to Windsor, uh, more Sudi family. Uh, can thank them enough. And then now here the Matthew family, they've been they've been really good to me. You know, my last year and. Um, you know, with all them being thanked, I got to thank my family as well. You know, they uh, they've always been there for me, and um, you know, they're they're the best at uh, supporting me with whatever I need help with. And then also, you know, a couple of my buddies and my friends at home as well. You know, they're always give me the gears about if I'm playing good or not. But um, you know. It, like you said, it takes a huge support system, and I have a great one. That's what friends are for, right? Exactly, <laughs> yeah. Keep me on my toes. Homer, it's been a pleasure to watch you uh, on the ice and off the ice in the community here in Kingston. Uh, we're really looking forward to see what you do next. Uh, but in the meantime, why don't you go get us an OHL championship before you get out of here. Sounds good. Sounds good. That's Jacob Holmes, defenseman for the Kingston Frontenacs, ready to take on his final regular season games before the Frontenacs head into the OHL playoffs later next week.